It's no surprise at this point that Nintendo is trying to do something that they have always done, but never done quite to the success they often want to obtain. Nintendo follows up their most successful consoles with successors that try to build on top of the prior system. It sounds good on paper, but whether it was with the stark sales drop from the Nintendo Entertainment System to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, from the Wii to the Wii U, or even the DS to the 3DS, Nintendo has struggled at even getting close to recapturing the success of the prior platform. Of course, like any plot, there is an exception. Technically, because they combined the Game Boy Color into the same general generation as the Game Boy, that means on paper the Game Boy Advance was a very successful sequel system. The weird thing is, despite blowing up in sales, it was one of the shortest generations of handhelds almost as if they wanted the system out years earlier than it actually released. But Nintendo finds themselves back in the saddle of being at the king of the mountaintop. Their flagship system, Nintendo Switch, outsold everything that released in the prior generation. It passed the Wii U quite easy, and heck, passing the Xbox One wasn't hard either. But it also passed the 3DS and the PlayStation 4. Even looking at today's current generation, it still has a two times bigger install base than the PlayStation 5, and the Xbox series is so far behind everyone, most have counted that platform maker out for future generations to come. Nintendo Switch is on the verge of passing the Nintendo DS to become the second best-selling game console ever made, and it's well within spitting distance of catching and even surpassing the PlayStation 2. Now, before I dive more into this, I just want to remind you guys, if you're enjoying the video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. Now, Nintendo themselves likely isn't focused on achieving those numbers, though they still may get there anyways. Rather, Nintendo's focus has been clear for a long time. They want the current success to carry forward to the next generation of hardware. Nintendo's current president, Shintaro Furukawa, wasn't in charge when Nintendo Switch launched. It was a tumultuous time for Nintendo, the corporation. Their fearless leader, Satura Iwata, passed away very young due to cancer, and he was the one that brought Nintendo to heights never seen before during the Wii and DS era. He was also the mastermind behind the Nintendo Switch itself. Unfortunately, the era that led into Switch was full of broken promises and low sales. Still, Iwata set the foundation with Switch, and then the company mostly carried forward the game plan laid before them. It is even rumored that Iwata, on his deathbed, gave instructions for how to launch the Nintendo Switch. We'll likely never get to know the truth of that one, and may you rest in peace, Satura Iwata. The Switch was already off to a roaring start when Furukawa took over in late 2018. Sure, he can get some credit for maintaining a successful ship, but from day one, he stated the biggest goal of his was to not let Nintendo fall off the proverbial cliff. He was referencing where Nintendo peaks really high, but crashes down hard when moving on to the next system. Part of that mission to prevent that is already currently happening. Nintendo often abandoned platforms quite harshly right at the end of generations. But here we are in year eight, and at least through the month of July, Nintendo has had a game published every single month. They have a June Direct plan focused on big games for the rest of 2024. He's keeping Switch relevant in a way Nintendo had failed to do with prior systems. This has led to the system continuing to sell, where the projected numbers for the current fiscal year actually mimic really close to what Nintendo did during the first full fiscal year with the Nintendo Switch when it landed on the market in 2017. That's impressive. Nintendo Switch 2 is technically already announced to exist, with more news planned before the end of the current fiscal year, ending in March of 2025. The biggest task is ahead. How do you transition from what is working now to what is supposed to be a copycat system that's more powerful tomorrow? 
As I previously stated, some of the way to do that is already happening. Nintendo is maintaining the current platform's relevancy. This keeps users engaged and active all the way up to the launch of a new product. Nintendo hasn't done a good job of this in the past, but they are improving on that right before our eyes. They also have an active subscription service, the first in Nintendo's history. They are providing services that, like them or not, tens of millions of people are paying a subscription fee to. This service-based subscription can help and has helped with others such as Sony transition to the next system by keeping a universal account system going forward, such as the Nintendo account. Something Nintendo confirmed will be on the next platform. All right, fine. Some of this is just surface level stuff, basics, but that's just it. Nintendo has gotten all these basics very wrong in the past. There are other things that can help create an initial smooth transition and one that Nintendo does have a history with. Backwards compatibility. This doesn't guarantee success, but it does guarantee that regardless of what's available at launch, you can have access to a massive back catalog day one. What else does Nintendo need to do? Let's get the final, most obvious thing out of the way. Keep up a consistent cadence of game releases that a wide variance of audience wants to play. Switch was one of their most consistent eras for publishing games, averaging one published game for every month the system was on the market. That's impressive. Literally no other platform holder has ever done that before. Not even Nintendo. Keep that going. Make sure you have at least two, maybe even three system selling level games every year during the first four years. This is critical. 3D Mario, Zelda, Pokemon, Animal Crossing, Smash, Splatoon, Mario Kart, etc. Regardless of what the game is, you need to release them at a cadence that always has something big just over the horizon. But that's obvious. If you fail to deliver games, there won't be an audience. But here is the thing. If this all sounds familiar, it should. This is part of the reason the Switch did so well. You see, Nintendo Switch 2 doesn't need to reinvent the wheel to maintain success. It merely needs to build on top of what's already working. Give us everything we already got used to getting, but then make everything just a little bit better. The eShop? Let's make some navigation and UI improvements, maybe even improving how games are released on it. NSO, let's keep adding new platforms and surprises several times a year. The UI of the whole platform, let's add in some fun options and quirks, themes, music, heck, even let us customize our own navigation entirely would be really awesome. Social sharing features, modernize them. Yeah, maybe you don't want to pay the $40,000 a month to X to access their API, but there are other platforms out there. TikTok, Discord, YouTube, Threads, anywhere that has a company that will let you implement their API, do it. Make your platform the easiest one to socially share with others. Be the talk of the town. Speaking of socials, keep the Nintendo app, but expand its uses. Let us log into the app and message and voice chat with our friends on Switch 2 and set up play sessions with a calendar with dates and, you know, something you actually promised originally with the Nintendo Switch Online app seven years ago. Beyond that, let us message and voice chat people locally on Switch 2. Yeah, I know this is just standard on other systems, but it will feel like a landslide victory for consumers. You are missing basic features, so adding them in at this stage will go a long way to making people want to upgrade from their Switch to a Switch 2. Make sure the Joy-Cons this time are more durable. The amount of cases of stick drift is pretty unacceptable on Switch. Take care of that, even if you don't want to make a big deal about it. You see, you don't need to reinvent the wheel because the wheel never fell off the tracks. Nintendo Switch is still selling so damn well because people love what it is, what games are on it, etc. But for one of the rare times in company history, you hit on a concept that doesn't feel dated. In fact, handheld console gaming feels more modern than ever before. It may even be making buying a box you put under your TV feel antiquated if you play your cards right. You see, this isn't difficult. 
but it is non-traditional. Nintendo is a company built on taking big swings. They aren't PlayStation, iterating and improving upon existing ideals that create a consistent and loyal audience generation to generation. Nintendo is that system many pick up when Nintendo hits on some wacky idea that people can't stop talking about. But Nintendo also doesn't have two platforms to fall back on. They now need their only platform to always be a success. Consistency. That means Nintendo has to adopt a new way of thinking, maintaining success, not resetting the entire structure and hoping the next big innovation takes off. And it's not like you can't innovate on top of this either. Who knew that Ring Fit Adventure, a game where you're physically moving a circle, would end up selling 15 million units? Labo may have never taken off, but it was still a very unique concept. Mario Kart Home Circuit showed how much further AR and reality-based toys could still go. You don't need to reinvent the wheel to have unique concepts. In this way, you can keep being you. Don't lose the inventiveness, but also maintain the base. It can be done. PlayStation has done it a little bit, going down the virtual reality route as an example, but they still primarily sell based on traditional gaming experiences. Learn from that. You're already expanding your brand awareness with phone games, amusement parks, and movies. Now deliver consistent, reliable hardware and experiences that can keep you on top. Furukawa the task isn't easy, and I can make it sound that way from the outside looking in, and I know this, but it's not impossible. And based on everything you have said, I have faith that you are the one to do what Nintendo has always failed to do. Now we just need to see the plan in action. The plan has already begun. Stage one is here. You publicly announced the new platform is on the way. Stage two is next. I eagerly await to see what your plan to guarantee Nintendo's immediate future is. I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will catch you in the next video.